this is a short video in which I'm going to show a way using free open source software, LibreOffice Draw, to add highlights to text in an image. Not in text like a Microsoft Word document, but in an image, for example, one you might have captured from the internet. I'm going to use The Call of Cthulhu by H.P. Lovecraft as my example. I'm going to highlight the text The Call of Cthulhu. I'm going to use LibreOffice, which is a free open source office program very similar to Microsoft Office. It's available for free and it is available for all major platforms. You can get it for the Macintosh. You can get it for Windows 10, Windows computers. You can get it for Linux computers, and it's been ported to some other uh, platforms as well, I believe. Um, so this is their website. I already have a slightly earlier version downloaded. So I'm going to start LibreOffice, or more properly, LibreOffice Draw. So it has several different programs. Impress is presentation software like Microsoft PowerPoint or Apple's Keynote. What I want to use is a drawing program called LibreOffice Draw. So it'll take a few seconds to come up. And what I'm going to do here is import an image so I can edit it. And here we are. So I have a demonstration folder highlighting demo. And this is a screenshot of the story that I was showing briefly before. So, incidentally, Lovecraft's works are in the public domain. They weren't properly copyrighted, so they're widely available. Um, and this is one of his most famous stories, The Call of Cthulhu. You might have heard of his horrific monster, Cthulhu, who's introduced in this story. So how do I add a highlight here? So I've added the image, and I'm going to zoom in so it's a little bit easier to uh, see what's going on and manipulate things. Something you learn with practice. So let's make it double the normal size so you can now see much more clearly what's going on. And we're going to adjust it. Uh, okay, so the next step is we want to add a line. So I select the line tool here. These are the drawing tools. They can be hidden with this button here. Uh, again, they do change this a bit from version to version. So just for clarity here, uh, let's do about LibreOffice. So we have a record of what version I was doing. So the about gives you LibreOffice, the document foundation, the logos, etc. This is version 6.2.7.1 for the x86-64 bit. And it has a bunch of other information here exactly identify which version. I think there's links to their website, etc. This is not their most recent. It's from a couple months ago, you know, 2019. It is now um, late February, almost the end of February 2020. So it's a little bit, I wouldn't say out of date, but it's not the most recent release, I believe, of LibreOffice, but it's pretty close. So let's close that, and let's get back to the issue of how am I going to create and add a highlight. So, so remember, this is, this is not printed text like a Microsoft Word document. This is actually an image. A screenshot from, uh, in this case, the website with the Call of Cthulhu, and I want to highlight for some reason the Call of Cthulhu. So what I'm going to do is put in a line. Not do the right thing. There we go. Now it seems to have reverted back to the. It's, this is one of the weaknesses of LibreOffice is it doesn't always seem to do this quite right. You have to recognize that happened and go back and reselect the line tool. So now we have a line. Now that line is actually this color, which is a sort of a blue. And we generally don't highlight things in blue. I'm going to pick the pretty standard yellow color that's used with most highlighters. Now, obviously, this is too. Um, this one is too thin. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. We moved it. And you can see that it isn't going to cover Cthulhu very well. So just for fun, let's see if I can drag it over here. So there we are, and all we've got is a strike through at this point. It's not what we need, but we can get out of that. Okay, so let me now select the width. It is a very, it's a half a printer's point. It's not very large, so I will set a custom width much larger. 
and we'll make it 25 points. Actually, let's make it a little bit smaller because it's going over the other guy. Let's try maybe 20 points. That's yeah, still a little bit. Let's try maybe 15. There we go. See? Now, right now, this is completely opaque, this line. We can't see call for the call of Cthulhu. What we really want to do is see through and highlight, emphasize that text. So let's set the kind of transparency. Notice what I'm doing here. We have the width of the line, the color of the line, and a transparency uh, control, which now sets it to this. And now you can see, aha, we can read Call of Cthulhu, but it is properly highlighted. And let me actually save this at this point. And so this would be, and we're in the highlighting demo, so we're going to say the Call of Cthulhu, first page with highlight. Okay, so we have a Call of Cthulhu is highlighted. We are going to uh, put it back to, uh, let's see if we can find 100%, yeah. All right, so that's not quite what I was after, but there we go. So now you can see it more in context. And we can actually do a lot of other things, like manipulate the size of this page and so forth. But right now I just want to demonstrate how you do just the highlighting and not go into a lot more details about how this works. So now we select the file menu, we go down to export, and this will export it defaults to GIF. I don't want a GIF, I want a JPEG, so here we go. We've got a JPEG, and it's got the highlight, and let's let it save. It gives a JPEG options. Now you'll notice it's actually exporting the entire page, not just the image that I brought in here. This is something you might have to manipulate in practice, depending on what you capture and so on. But for right now, I'm just going to demonstrate it this way. 24-bit color. It's default quality. I'm not going to monkey with any of these. But it tells you how much space would be needed. So let's go ahead and do that. It takes a little bit of time for it to uh, export and encrypt, uh, not encrypt, but encode the JPEG image. Pretty quick, but still it does take a little bit of time. Um, let's close that, and here we are. So let's see. Call of Cthulhu with highlights. So let's see what it looks like. Now it comes up in Microsoft Paint on my system. We might ask why I'm not doing it in Microsoft Paint. It, Microsoft Paint either doesn't have a highlight option or it's remarkably well hidden. I looked for it. I also found a number of other programs. It's either not possible to do a highlight or it's very complicated. And LibreOffice Draw is relatively relatively simple. It could be better, of course. I had to do a bunch of adjustments, as you saw, set a bunch of non-default values in order to get it. But you can see here, you can see here that I have, in fact, added the highlight in the JPEG. So I could highlight more text if I wanted to using the line draw function with a 50% or 30% or 70% transparency in a LibreOffice Draw. Right, so let's go back to LibreOffice Draw. It's this guy here. And there we are. And that's how it was done. And this is actually a separate element. So I could remove it, for example, or do other manipulations in the future. Now, uh, basically what I would say is this is one way you can highlight text in an image, where it's actually in an image. It's not broken up into elements, uh, you know, the way that a Microsoft Word document or, some, or similar kinds of things. Uh, LibreOffice actually has a Word program. It's called LibreOffice Writer. It's very similar to Microsoft Word, but the, I'm using the drawing program, the image editor and uh, image uh, manipulation program. So that concludes this demonstration. The demonstration was produced on, actually, let's just get a very precise thing here, on February 29th, 2020, about 7.13. It's, that is Eastern Standard Time in the United States. And now I will conclude this video. If you like this video, please take a moment to click like. Please click subscribe and the notification bell if you would like to receive more content from us. We welcome constructive feedback and comments. Mathematical Software is developing products and services to automate data analysis, reducing the risks of costly errors and improving results. If you want to support our work, you can subscribe on our Patreon page. This is the URL for our Patreon page. Scan the QR code in the lower right corner with your smartphone to get the Patreon link. Our Patreon link is also in the show notes below.